Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Elifem Brit, and today we're going to have a quick tutorial on how to roll back our GitHub app commits. And this is a specific question to you. Ah, yes, you. Can you actually roll back your Git commits if it comes to it? And this question in the past, I would have answered yes until recently I tried to, to perform a rollback and for some reason it became ambiguous. So this ambiguity is what I'm actually trying to resolve here. I know a lot of us can roll back eventually. Yeah, I use the word eventually because it looks like an app. However, there is a way to actually undo it, which is what we're going to venture to into this tutorial. So here is a sample exercise that I've designed for this um, reason, and it has just one file, item.tests. And what this entails is just some changes we've made over time, as you can see. But what we are really interested in is the commits. So here are the commits that we've made so far. And the last commit we had was a med request from this brabish. So yeah, this is on here. We will not be working with this. We will this still be working on our code editor or if you decide to use your terminal. It's more of a terminal work than coding work anyways. So back into my VS code, here is what we have. Here is our items. And what we want to do is to get back to the states. So we want to get back to a state where all we have is just, this is the first change. And in order to do that, you need to kind of analyze your lots and locate where this would recite. So the first thing you want to do is to type in git log. And here is where we currently are, as we can see. And if we scroll down, here is where we want to go. Okay, so we want to not come here because the first change was where we created this item.txt. So where we actually want to go is this commit change. Or rather, is this second change, okay? Take note of that. So in order to perform a rollback, we have two methods. You see that you reset, which is a destructive method. So I would advise you to use this method if you are working in a collaborative environment. If you have team members, don't use this method. You only want to probably use this method when you are working alone and you don't care what happens. Another disadvantage of this method is that you don't create a pull request or a commit flow. It destroys the old commits. And to perform this method, you have to actually be on the main branch because you can't push it anyways unless you force it. So that's something to note. So let's test out this method. And I will do this after clearing this out. So to exit the Vim editor, I will do colon Q. So now that is done, we can try the reset method. So like I said, technically, we are meant to do this on the main branch. But because we don't want to tap out with our main branch, I'm going to create a second one. So git checkout dash p, then we have the main two, just to test the reset flow. And for the reset flow, we also still need to know the commits we are going back to. So we can do git log. So let's scroll down. So we are coming down to this uh, level. So or rather, I think this one, that's where we made the first change. Then we can close this, there out. So I've copied the commit ID, and now I can do git reset the commit ID. And yep, as you can see, every other thing has been unstaged. The little we have here now is the um, first change. So to confirm what I'm saying, you can do git status. And you find out that every other thing has been unstaged. So to remove all those ones, we can just do git checkout dots. And voila, we are back to the first change. So like I said, you only want to use this method when you are the only one working or when you can just push to the main with nobody asking you question. So that's about that. Now let's move to the second method and let's clear this out. So the second method is what you actually want to use and is the revert method. So this is what you use within a collaborative environment. So first thing first, let's go back to the main branch. So we are back to the regular thing. And here you want to create a new branch. So git checkout dash b row back. So also you have to take note of the commit logs because that's what you want to work with. But compared to the reset where you can just go back to a specific uh, commit ID, you can't do that here. Yeah, it's going to cause some issue. So instead we're going to be committing one after the other. We're going to be rolling back one after the other. So I'll clear this out. Actually, let me pull this up. Let's do git log. So we get to see all the commit history. And this is where we currently are. So because this is a merge request, it makes sense to step down to the next commit first before moving to the next merge. 
But technically, what you want to take note of are the merge commits. Okay? But because we are currently at the merge commits, yeah, I tend to want to be kind of careful about it. And I'll first roll back to the initial commit here. So I'll copy this log. I'll create a new terminal. And I'll do git revert, then the commit ID. And this should be easy. So it's kind of telling us that it's trying to revert to this. So this is the default commit message. And I will accept it by doing column X like that. And I'll save. So that's done. If we pull this down, you see that we are out of that last uh, change, which makes sense. So next we want to go to this change. So again, we pull this up. And to access that change, that's the merge request here. So I'll copy the um, ID. And for merge requests, the pattern is a bit different. So it's going to be git revert dash m for merge, then one for the number of rows you are going, then the ID, then you enter. So there is a conflict which tends to happen because they don't really recognize each other. So let's fix the conflict. So as you can see, the conflict is trying to decide if to use this or this. But because we are reverting, we only want to work with incoming changes, not the current one. The current one is what we are reverting from. So accept incoming changes and we'll save this. So now we are at this point. So now we can say git add all. So we are updating all our changes. Then we can do revert continue. So the commit message now will be saved for that. Again, we'll save it. Clear this out. So now we have a few more changes to go. So let's do git log. So let's look for the log. So we are adding new commits, even though we are going to a separate commit. So we want to come here. Let's access this one first. We can end this one. Q. Then do git. Revert. Then this. So a conflict again. However, I think we should understand the flow already. We accept incoming change. We'll save this. And we'll do git so we'll do git add all first git revert continue so this is going to create the commit message for us which we are going to save and that's it we are back at the beginning of the whole process as you can see and now you can create a pr for this so git push origin rollback So we've put origin rollback and we can come back to our browser, come down to PR. We're going to have a new one. We can create PR. So rollback. So as you can see, it's able to merge and there is no issue. And it's also keeping track of all the changes you've made. And I can do create pull requests. Then I can merge. So now that I've merged, if I come back to my code and I go back to main, git check out main so as you can see we still have this however if i pull now git pull and voila we are back to the first change and that's how you roll back okay so we have two methods as established yeah you can decide for yourself which you want to use and that'll be all for this tutorial i believe i've been able to share some important information and if you enjoy tutorials like this do leave a thumbs up and subscribe if you've not See you in the next one.